Have you ever finished your tax return looking like this? If you're nodding yes, you're not alone. That's the why do I owe so much expression. And why does someone like Elon Musk look like he's just heard the funniest joke in the world when he's done with his tax return? How do billionaires and celebrities manage to have a tax bill that is smaller than your grocery receipt? Is this even legal? How are the rich getting richer and richer? And what's the mysterious connection between the wealthy and a few secluded islands. In this video, I'm uncovering the tax tricks used by the super wealthy and what they mean for people like us. So stay tuned because we are about to reveal some of the most closely guarded secrets of the financial elite. Our story starts in the Atlantic Ocean, specifically on the Cayman Islands, the British Virgin Islands and Bermuda. Many people think of them as scenic Caribbean islands, perfect for vacationing in paradise, and they're not wrong. However, in the eyes of money, these places are more than just holiday paradises. They are also tax havens. They are home to most of the world's offshore companies and offshore cash. Half of the global cross-border transactions pass through these tax havens. And make no mistake, nearly all companies worldwide and almost every celebrity can somehow be linked to these Caribbean islands. The most prominent one of these islands are the British Virgin Islands, or BVI. This small area with just over 30,000 people has total assets amounting to 1.4 trillion US dollars. This means the average assets per person on the island are over 40 million US dollars. And to answer our initial questions and to understand the hidden secrets on these mysterious and beautiful islands, we must first talk about taxes. But don't fall asleep, everyone. I'll try my best to make it interesting. First up, tax avoidance. Tax avoidance is different from tax evasion. And theoretically, tax avoidance is legal. But what's the difference? It's like if you're driving from place A to place B and there's a toll booth charging $20 on the way. But there's a slightly longer route with a toll booth charging only $5. If you choose the longer route to pay $5 instead of $20, that's legal tax avoidance. But if you don't take either route, and try to find a shortcut through the middle to avoid paying taxes altogether, that's tax evasion, which is illegal. Interesting way to explain it, right? <laughs> of course, in reality, the boundary between the uh, two can sometimes be a little blurry, as we'll see in a moment. We all know that whether you're an individual or a company, if you have income or profit, you need to pay taxes. If your business activities are in one country, then there's nothing much to discuss. If you're in the United States, you pay US taxes. If you're in Australia, you pay Australian taxes. But once cross-border situations arise, things get tricky. For example, let's say Barry here is a resident of country A. He goes to country B and invests in Flo's milk tea shop. He makes $10,000 and now he wants to take this money back to country A to spend. At this point, theoretically, these $10,000 could be taxed in both countries, in country of Barry's residence and in the country where Barry earned his money. Now let's say both countries charge a 20% tax. How should these taxes be collected in this situation? Typically, a country might follow either the territorial principle or the residence principle. I know it's a bit theoretical, but bear with me. The theoretical principle is that any income generated in my territory, regardless of your nationality, you have to pay taxes to me. And the residence principle is that if you are a resident of my country, any income you generate, no matter which country you earn it, you have to pay taxes to me. Most countries follow the territorial principle, meaning the country where you earn the money will tax it. But the thing is that most larger economies also follow the residence principle. The United States is the most well-known example on the list. But countries like the UK, Canada or Japan do the same. So you see, Barry here could end up paying taxes in both countries, leaving him with just $6,400. Think about it, with double taxation like this, who would want to invest across borders, right? Now, that's why most countries actually sign bilateral agreements. What does this mean? Well, in a situation like in Barry's, both sides would agree to pay less tax or perhaps follow the territorial principle. Right, so that's how these two principles work, but in a very, very simplified way. The actual situation is much more complex as tax laws vary greatly from country to country. So if you want to avoid taxes, the goal is quite clear. Either you pay less tax in country A or less tax in country B. Let's talk about country A first. How can you make the tax rate in country A, the country where you live, lower? Well, you could find a location with a lower tax rate like Hong Kong, Singapore, Monaco, or one of these tax haven islands. Their capital tax gains is zero. What does this mean? It means that in these places, any money you make from investments and dividends isn't taxed at all. So Barry doesn't have to worry about paying taxes in country A on this income. 
Places like the BVI in Bahamas go even further. Here, not only do you not pay tax on investment income, but also any regular income that companies earn is completely tax-free. For a company, all you need to do is register it in one of these tax havens. And if you're an individual, think about buying property there. You can stay for a bit every year, enjoy the stunning views, and become a permanent resident. By doing this, you effectively make that tax haven your home for tax purposes. So these are some of the top countries in terms of GDP per capita. Monaco, Luxembourg, Bermuda, Cayman Islands. It's because the wealthy love to flock them, right? Okay, that was about the place of residence. Now, what about the place where the money is earned? Some people might say, well, the money is earned where it's earned. How can you change that? And indeed, for many tangible economic activities, like if I invest in a real business in Australia or say, work at Flores Milk Tea Shop in Australia, there's nothing much to discuss. The earning place is indeed Australia. However, there are many intangible assets. Those are earnings where it's not so easy to say which country they are generated in. For example, if I write a book or compose a song, where was this intellectual property created? It's not that clear. And this is where there's room for maneuvering. Apple, Microsoft, Pfizer, and the list goes on. They all have set up their overseas research bases in countries with very low corporate tax rates. And actually, in the case of these three, it's Ireland. And for many small companies or individuals, pretty much the same. They can set up their entities in those Caribbean islands with zero tax rates. Then they find ways to transfer their money there, which creates this massive offshore market. Actually, many celebrities use this method for tax avoidance. Shakira, for example. She uses a very clever method to pay less tax. She bought a house in the Bahamas, where just owning property makes you a resident. And residents there don't pay income tax. And it's said that the pricier the house, the quicker your residence is sorted. And just like that, Shakira obtained tax resident status in the Bahamas. But of course, that's not the end of it. It's not like she became a tax resident of the Bahamas and then started a the company there to do business and make money. She found a relatively more reasonable tax haven, Luxembourg. Now, being a celebrity, she negotiated with the Luxembourg government and eventually got her tax rate reduced to 2%. So first she established a company in Luxembourg, paying 2% tax. Then she used a BVI company to hold that Luxembourg company, followed by a Cayman company to hold the BVI company, and finally a Bahamian company to hold the Cayman company. And in the end, Shakira holds the company she set up on the Bahamas. So in reality, these are layers of shell companies with a chain of control where the intermediary tax rates are all zero. And finally, she only pays those 2% tax. But why set up these shell companies in between? We'll talk about this in a moment. Okay, what we just discussed has to do with the low tax rates characteristic of these tax havens. Another crucial reason they stand out is their privacy. BVI in this respect is the leader in this regard and one of the most commonly used tax havens. When you register a company there, almost none of the information needs to be disclosed. You don't need to reveal shareholders or actual beneficiaries. The only record is the board of directors. You can even spend an additional $500 to hire a local person as a proxy director, adding another layer of privacy protection. Your name will never appear in any of these company documents. Even the BVI government doesn't know. The registration process is also very simple. You find an agent and within three days and for $1,000, it's done. BVI has very strict laws mandating that those involved in the company operations, whether agents, lawyers, accountants, and so on, must strictly protect client privacy. Unless under extremely exceptional circumstances, they cannot disclose information. You see, this makes things a lot more convenient for high net worth individuals or companies. And in many countries to ensure transparency and openness of information, a company's equity structure and transaction records must be public. This includes how many companies I've registered, how many I've invested in. It all can be found online. That's not ideal if you want to keep things a little private. So to work around this, a BVI shell company is set up to act as the investment entity. For example, let's call it Flow Limited. Then afterwards, no one can find out that it's me behind it. Actually, the reason why Shakira layered so many shell companies is because, well, she's so famous. So she used several layers to hide her identity, just in case. You see, these tax havens both have these characteristics, low taxes and privacy. 
they not only facilitate tax avoidance, but also conceal one's identity. And such an advantage naturally makes them a crucial part of the economic activities for many high net worth individuals and companies. For instance, it was found in an investigation that King Abdullah II of Jordan from 1995 to 2017 established at least 30 shell companies through advisors to buy properties in the US and UK and other places, each worth up to 106 million US dollars. And another example is the former British Prime Minister, Tony Blair, who in 2017, by purchasing a BVI company, acquired a building worth of 8.8 .8 million US dollars. And in doing so, he saved $400,000 in taxes compared to buying the building directly and also concealed his own information. Many people or companies used British Virgin Islands to hide information and some may not want to disclose it to the public or maybe they don't want to reveal it to the government of a particular country. But I also want to stress here that this does not necessarily mean that their activities are illegal. It's not always the case. And speaking of which, you might be curious if tax havens protect privacy how do we know about these operations? Well, the information mainly comes from documents leaked by a few insiders or law firms, which then make their way to the public. But only a very small fraction of information ever gets out. So that's about it for how these islands facilitate tax avoidance and help companies and celebrities pay much less tax. And if you enjoyed this video, you might like to check out this video here, where I talk about how the most valuable company on the planet avoids taxes on hundreds of billions of dollars in sales every year. Thanks so much for watching and see you in the next one.